Hey YouTube, hey viewers, and welcome back to another episode of creating an API using Laravel. We're getting pretty far into the series, so we managed to group our routes together and being able to get our credentials from the user by using bearer tokens. Yeah, it's time we step up. I was going to do reset password, but I thought we'll do a little bit, get a little bit away from users and let's start creating maybe another table inside our database that's going to control like kind of like status updates that you have in Facebook. So your user will create a status update and then we'll then post and save and then other people will be able to see it. But for now, all we're going to have is the status update where we can add statuses appended to a user. And that way we can just see the user's status updates. Obviously, when we move further into the series, we're going to do things like friend requests and things like that um, of adding friends and etc. So stick around for it and you'll be able to see it working. So today's all going to be about status updates and setting up our table and also the relationships that we can have with inside our models for that. So it's going to be pretty cool. Um, hopefully you're going to enjoy it and let's get straight into it. So first things first, we need to jump into our console and we're going to have to make a migration script for this comment section because if you remember, we don't really have anything set up. Sorry, if I just get Heidi open. Uh, don't think yet, sorry. Normally I have everything. Inside our um, database, and inside our YouTube database, all we've really done is this users table. We haven't created anything else. So we need to do that within this session. So remember what we do is inside our console, we have access to all these artisan commands. Remember PHP artisan gives us a list of all the artisan commands that we have for Laravel. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be creating a table or a migration in this case, Actually, we could actually just create the model if we wanted to. So this model, and we can actually create a migration script with inside that model. Let's do that. It's probably easier. So let's go uh, make model here. So we can use this make model. So we're going to PHP artisan make model. Now we're going to give it a name. So in this case, the model we're going to call is status updates. Status updates, because remember, we don't want plural. The only time we want plural is for our database and you'll, you'll see what's going to happen now. So if I do PHP artisan make model status update dash M and basically this is saying we're going to make a model, but once we make this model, we're also going to create a migration script. So if we press enter, you'll notice that the model gets created and also a migration script that kind of saves us making a whole new migration. Um, and then also then making a model on top of that. So it's a, a nice cool little technique to learn that we can just create a, a model and then just make a migration script off the top of that. So with that now set up, what we need to do is we just need to add some information into that migration. So we're gonna pop back into our project and you'll notice that we've got the status update. I really do need to start moving these into its own folder, but for now we'll just keep them out. Um, we'll do like a cleanup episode, I guess, where we move these into specific. So if we go down, we should have a new migration. So if we have a look in resources, no, sorry, wrong place, completely wrong place, databases, migrations, and we have this one now called creators status update. Now, remember we called that model status update. Notice in our migration, it's actually called it status updates for us. So it kind of already knows what we want to call the table. As long as you to give it the own plural, it'll just add the plural onto it, which is pretty neat, I find. It's pretty cool. So. A few things we need to do. First thing is we need to attach our user ID to this. And to do this, we need to make what is known as a foreign key. Now to make foreign keys is a little slightly complicated in Laravel. Sometimes it throws errors at us and it gets really irritating. So sometimes you might come across a few errors. That's maybe because you've not used an ID, for example, and you're using an integer and sometimes it gets a little bit confused. But you've got to remember that IDs are pretty much big ints. That's all you've got to think about. And we need to assign those. So we're going to use table and what we're going to use off here is what is known as a big integer. And basically we're going to give it a name for that column and that's just going to be user ID, which we're going to get from our user ID column. We're going to make sure this is an unsigned because by principle it is not signed. So we're going to just unsign it and we're also going to index it just so it's a little bit more quicker. And then what we're going to do underneath that, we can pretty much just copy this. And then we're going to have foreign because it's a foreign key. Actually, we'll go through it all just so it makes sense. So we're going to make sure that this is going to be a foreign key 
from this same column name, so user ID. So these are duplicates. So remember, we're making the column here, and then now we're just making the foreign key. So we're saying that this column called user ID needs to reference, and it's going to reference the ID from the user table. So it's going to be on, and then the table, which is users. That pretty much sets up our foreign key reference. So it's saying, okay, we're going to make this column called user ID. It's unsigned and indexed. And then we're going to make a foreign key of user ID. So these need to be the same. It references the ID on the users table. So it's saying, okay, at this users table, we're going to reference this column. What else do we need? Um, let's say, okay, let's put some, I don't know, we obviously we need the status update, don't we? So if we have text, text and we can just call this um, i don't know update status so that'll work and let's just finish it off just so we keep it nice and clean because we can add stuff later on it's not a problem so we'll have timestamps because we want to make sure that these are updated let's say for example they edit their status update and also we can have table soft deletes in case they want to get rid of it but we want to keep that data for our own sake and we'll this timestamps here because we don't need it that's pretty much it sets up so we all we're having in this table is an id a big integer that's going to make be a, a foreign key reference for user id and then we've just got a text field for status and then we're going to attach a timestamp stamps not timestamp that's why it's shouting at me and also soft delete. And then once we, if we roll back, for example, we're just going to drop the whole table. Let's save that and let's run this migration. So let's jump into our command. Actually, I just play. And I'm just going to jump into my Docker container, where the Docker container is the only place where I can run my migration scripts, depending on your environment is slightly different. So I'm just going to go into the directory and I'm just going to do PHP artisan Migrate. This should then create my table for me. There we go. So no errors. So we know that um, our foreign key reference is working. I need to point out though, for anyone that's new to Laravel, if I decided to make this migration script, so this uh, status updates table before this user table, remember I'm making a foreign key reference, this won't work. So I can't run this one first. So and then use this afterwards because I'm making a reference to another table. So always make sure that that table that you're focusing on first is there otherwise you won't be able to make the reference and it will definitely shout at you then and you you don't really want that to happen so what do we do from now so if we have a look at that if I, at our database let's do a refresh we've got this thing called status updates now and we can see inside our dates we've got id a user id status created at updated at and it deleted at that's pretty cool because now we've got everything that we need however we did make this relationship and to make things a little bit more easier for us when it comes to attaching code to, let's say, for example, I want to attach my user ID to this status update. There are things that we can make it a lot more easy instead of calling two separate tables. Remember when we did, uh, let's go back to our code base. Remember in our auth controller, we're making requests. Let's go deep into yeah, so remember we did inside our repositories we're calling on the user repository the user now we don't really want to call when we're making a status update to call both of them because that could be a little bit annoying so we want to kind of combine them together best way to do this is to set them up with inside laravel so we can go into our user model and we can add some extra stuff inside our model to reference that we've got this foreign key to our status update. Now you've got to think about it this way. We'll have one user that can have many statuses. Now this is known as a one-to-many relationship. There's loads of different relationships. You've got things like one-to-one, -one, many to many, and polymorphic relationships. And we'll be going through each one of them periodically through this tutorial. So you'll see that we'll pick on specific type of relationships. But in this instance, we're gonna have one user that can have many, many statuses. So we've got to remember that. And to do that, we can quite easily just write a little bit of logic. All we have to do is write public 
function and remember we had it called status updates just so we know what it references so we know that we're going to be calling status updates with inside the user and all we have to do inside here is just say return this is has many so you can see there's quite a few we've got all that has many has cast has changes has many through these are even more advanced features that we have has one through but that's pretty straightforward so we're just gonna have has many basically our relation belongs to and yes you've guessed it to this status updates so status updates Okay, remember no s just status updates so we're referencing this model here that's it you can reference it with um the primary and foreign keys if you wanted to but because we've named things correctly and this is a nice thing about laravel if you name things correctly it automatically picks it up so we need to kind of do the same thing when it comes to the user so if we go on, sorry onto the status update if we go onto the status update model you notice this one's a little bit more blanker than the user model we can quite easily do the same thing here so we can just do public function function and this one's going to be called a user because obviously you'll have a status update that belongs to a user not many users in this case because you only have one user and basically we're just going to do the same thing return and then this but this is not belongs to uh, uh, has many it's actually called belongs to sorry i gave it away then so this belongs to because we're only referencing one person and it's going to reference our user model so our user model here and that's it we pretty much set up how our relationship is going to work between these two fields here user data update so that's setting up our database and how that's meant to work with its logic what we're going to quickly do now is before we move into our next episode is we're going to quickly just set up our routes so inside our routes we're just going to set up a new group a new group group remember brackets array and this time we're going to have some middleware and this middleware is going to be our this one the auth api because we only want them to start doing stuff if they are actually logged in so auth api and we want to have the prefix prefix and we're going to call this um i don't know we could just so this is going to be everything in regards to the user and what the user can do so this will be um, doing post updates adding friends etc because at the moment this was just authorization we should have really called this prefix auth but we can just reference just user in this case so after this uh, array we're just going to do comma function name argument sorry function brackets and then we're just going to oh these like so just a semicolon at the end will do and then basically we're just going to make a route here just to start off with and this will just be a get request get request and we'll say user so we're going to be pretty much doing the same thing that we did here so on this auth controller but this time we're going to call this user controller and we're going to call this me so basically we're going to use this user and actually we'll just use me in this case so user and we're going to get the actual user by using the auth api here but you're going to say to me wayne we don't really have this controller well yes we don't so we're going to create it so if we go back into our console and we can just php artisan make and this is going to be the user controller a controller for us jump back into our hp storm we now have our user controller and inside there we're just going to call public function me that and remember we can use the same thing that we did the last time so we can user equals auth user 
that gives us the user back and then we can return our response which is a JSON response into array and this is how we're going to have our responses set up and you'll soon see that shortly data and then inside that data we're going to add some more data and inside there we're going to have success and don't worry about this just yet because we're going to break this out into its own little helper but this is the way it's going to be structured from now on so success is equal to true because we've got our user our message can be got oh, actually this one. here is the user and then we can just underneath that we can have data our user now going a little bit more quick into this tutorial a lot more faster than we have done but basically we're just grabbing the user here because they have to be logged in as we know about that because we need to use that token and we're just returning the response back remember if we look at the auth controller we did ver the very similar thing but we just returned back user now we're starting to learn that we need to start adding some more structure into these responses and these responses are going to be very specific soon and these responses will be using an, a specific helper so soon we just can have something like this return this is just an example for now um, response helper and then that will then go into um, success not success success and then we'll pass some parameters into there and that way it's just a little bit more neater for us but for now we're just sticking with what we have because we're just learning the basics for now now we've got the user we've got the response and we now know that this is our new group and it's going to the right controller and we call in the right function we can actually take this one out because we don't need it this will be for anything that we need to do in the future i.e if we just do actually just do a to do here and what we're going to be doing in here is going to be password resets are going to be part of this be doing inside this auth api but in this one we're just going to have user and anything that we're going to do with the user will be inside this group we can add some comments here if we want to we could just call this the routes and then this one is known as authentication routes comment blocks and we can actually take this out now because we don't need that just to clean up code a bit let's try this out and see if it works let's jump into postman and obviously we're going to need our login key so let's just send that off and we should get our access token so because remember we're going to need this and now on this get me we're not going to actually use users we're actually just going to call this user because remember we changed it here it's now called user and if we go send there we go we've got our data our success is true we've got here is the user and now we've got our nice little data string here and this is just a nice way of throwing out data in a nice structure so that anyone on our front end will be able to handle that, that information. So it was quite a crazy session today. We did quite a lot. Um, we're pretty much just setting up now so that we can start creating posts, uh, not, sorry, not posts, sorry, status updates for our users. And that way we can see them all happening. And how we did that is we created a migration script, i.e. this one, which was called status update. And basically that status update was we created this foreign key reference and we added this text area for our statuses and we've got timestamp and soft deletes and all we did then is we just added a little bit of extra logic into our models so our status update that basically the user so if we call this model and we put user or append user to it we know that this then belongs to the user table so that user can have a one status update. Oh, sorry, yeah. And then user here has many of these status updates. And again, this is a function that we can call um, when we are writing some of our code. That's dead easy. And then what we did next is we just setting up for our soon to be post updates. And we just set up a route for that. And this is gonna be everything to do with um, our user. So whatever our user can do. So I hope you enjoyed that session. Again, it was a nice quick one, nice and easy. Uh, I can't wait until we start getting into the status updates against nitty gritty, which is the next few 
episodes to come. So I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, don't forget to make sure that you jump over to the channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you really liked it, just make sure you hit that like button. And if you really liked it, make sure you share this with um, all your friends. And don't forget, we've got this join button if you want to support me through my escapades of creating these videos. This is going to be a very long tutorial series. I mean, I'm looking at maybe more than 30, 40 videos. So it will be quite a long one. And then if you want to join us up on Discord, just smack this button here um, and that will be on Discord. Again, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.